Hello there, ladies, gentlemen and unicorns. In this part number three of the multi-part series, we'll be taking a step out onto the sound stage. Or rather, into our apartment. With all the props and the wardrobe ready and the Finnish script and the storyboards, I felt uh, comfortable enough that I had everything that I needed to start shooting. I scheduled around five or six days and even took off a week from work just to get it done. And it was barely enough. This shoot was a bit different than most of my shoots because a lot of shots I had to do twice, once for each character. And because of the sheer amount of split screens, I decided to shoot the whole thing during night time. Why at night? Well, that I don't have to deal with changing lighting conditions from the sun. Even if you're shooting inside but rely on light from the outside, sometimes it's overcast on one shot when there are clouds and then it's sunny on the other shot and then when you try to combine those two shots in one image, it doesn't look right. Another upside of shooting at night is that you don't have uh, unwanted noise on the audio. You don't have chirping birds or overpassing planes, traffic noise, none of that stuff. But shooting at night meant that I had to fake the daylight for pretty much the whole thing because I don't want uh, you to see that it was shot at night. I wanted to feel to have, have the, this, this cheerful and friendly feeling throughout. And yeah, so I had to light as if it were daylight. In general, my workflow looked like this. I would take the script and the storyboards and learn a scene. This not only meant memorizing all the lines for all the characters, but also where I would be looking, when, how to react, where I would be standing or moving about, so that I'd have the whole scene play out in my mind entirely before starting to shoot. Then with the storyboards, I would shuffle the order of shots that I would shoot, uh, just so that I could keep costume changes down to a minimum, because this all takes time. And then I would set up the camera, set up the lights, set up the audio and start shooting. Well, not quite, I would start tweaking first. Like I said, I shot at night, so it meant paying special attention to all the lighting situation. And especially when you're shooting something all by yourself, it means constantly tweaking the focus on the camera and the lighting, because you can't look through the camera while you're in the scene. So it was a constant back and forth to the camera just hitting record, placing myself on the scene, then going back to the camera and reviewing how it looked. This is the camera and we have here one, where is it, two, three and four lights, which means close-up time. For example, here's the evolution of the lighting in the close-up of Future Phil in the random inspiration scene. More daylight from the front. And some more light from there, blue light from over there, and some warm light from over there. That's going to be the setting or player character of your game. Keep rolling! Once everything was ready, I'd do a couple of takes, and when I was happy with those, I would change my costume, and the only thing that I'd move would be the microphone <laughs> to, to pick myself up for the other character, and do a couple of takes for the other character. And then I'd keep everything set up and very carefully remove the memory card from the camera without bumping it too much. And yeah, just keep everything as it is and go straight to the computer into my editing software and do a very quick test of the split screen. Uh, just to see if it's working, whether I got my timing right, my eye lines, whether I was occluding myself and so on. Because if I found something that didn't work out, it wouldn't be a big problem because I still had everything set up. And most of the time it wasn't an issue. I only had to reshoot one or two shots, I think. But in the end, I was pretty lucky. So then I could go back to the camera and set up for the next shot. The first scene I shot was also the first scene in the script and it took place in my home office. Hello and welcome to the first day of shooting 
the Ludumdar 41 keynote. I shot all the parts of the first and final scene in the script with current Phil first, then changed into future Phil's outfit and shot his part, hoping for it to work. So starting out, I was a bit too cautious of any possible overlaps between characters and this is why Phil and future Phil are quite a part of each other. You can tell which scenes I shot first because it is pretty obvious there. But uh, once I got the hang of it, I grew much more comfortable with keeping uh, those two characters closer together without any issues. But most importantly, I got the eye lines right this time, thanks to a slender stand-in. This here I call Mr. Me, because we have relatively the same height. I think Mr. Me is a bit taller and we also have the same eye position. Uh, <laughs> I use this uh, as a stand-in when I'm talking with myself just to know where to look at and also when I'm behind the camera just setting up the scenes or where I can put the focus and yeah just it helps me to know where my eyes will be and where I will be standing. <laughs> Shooting only at night probably sounds horrific in terms of sleeping rhythm, but to me it's my natural rhythm. My day job is actually a nighttime job. I work from 5 p.m. to 2 in the morning, so it, I didn't have to adjust in any way. The problem with shooting at night sometimes was that there were still a few shots that I needed uh, to shoot during daylight, where there was something visible outside of the windows, and for those I really had to set my alarm. I was shooting in March and the sun sets at around yeah, 5 p.m. And with all the setup, uh, which takes a lot of time, as I've just outlined, um, yeah, I really had to get up earlier than usual just to get the setup right and those, those last rays of sunlight for anything that's visible outside the windows. The only shots with real natural light are the three angles with Connie in the living room and her reaction shot, and bookish fill in front of the window. And the rest I had to fake. What helped most of the time was just a strong light that I pointed towards the ceiling with a blue gel, a blue filter on, so that the blue light bounced from the ceiling down, which looked like some yeah, sunlight or daylight that filtered through the windows from the outside. I'm shooting the close-up shots now of me on the couch and for that I need to simulate the blue daylight coming coming in from outside and yeah this is just how I do it. I have this little portable instrument here and through the camera by the way it looks like this. Almost convincing. Yes and in, from the outside here we can see that again I, I just put some filter on a light to make it blue and just shine from the outside into the living room. So yeah this is this is my trick of <laughs> making sun where there is none. But in some regards I had to come up with some unconventional solutions. And of course we have some fake daylight coming through the window which is this one here and this is just a tablet <laughs> in the window frame but if you look through the camera shot you can see here it's barely visible from from this angle here everything should look like some still blue light from outside is coming in occasionally i had to use a little bit of magic to make a shot work yeah, when I started doing this wide angle shot, um, there was still some skylight outside there. And when I did the, the, the second shot with the future fill with in costume, uh, the light was already gone. So this is going to be uh, probably an editing nightmare. But yeah, it's challenging, but this is why we're here, right? Here's the original shot without the split screen. But during the shoot I had made sure that future fill would never overlap the window, so with some basic color correction the split screen worked. But I had forgotten uh, to film an establishing shot with bookish fill on the couch, uh, and once I was aware of that it was already too late and dark outside. 
So let's fake it. So it's pretty dark here and I need a back plate for daylight so that it appears like there's daylight coming uh, uh, in from the outside. The problem is I only have one light and it casts hard shadows. So what I'm doing now is making a long time exposure where I move the light around so that uh, if it all blends together in a long time exposure that it looks like some diffuse blue light from the outside. Okay, let's do this. And that's how you do it! This is the resulting photo which looks almost like daylight. In After Effects I cut out bookish fill from the video and put the photo in the background. A little bit of color correction here, some blurred edges there and presto, daylight. Still, I didn't catch everything. And if you watch the film real closely, you sometimes can spot the pitch black night through a window. And then of course, there was this wardrobe issue with Future Phil's pants. So as I was kneeling down to the camera, um, this happened. My golden future pants ripped and quite substantially as you can see. So this means no more back shots from me if I can avoid it. So yeah, crap. That tear got worse during the shooting days and I was very cautious with any shots that involved me from behind in Future Phil's costume. There's just this one shot I missed where the defect is rather obvious. So should Future Phil appear in a future video, I first really have to get new pants. There's, there's just no way around it. When I emerged from my script writing haze and looked at the script again, I knew I was in for a ride. There were a lot of uh, locations that I couldn't film in our apartment. Minecraft, for example, the time tunnel. So I knew I had to do this in front of a green screen. In our living room, I propped up my green screen and did my best to light it as evenly as possible. There was not a lot of room and neither did I have enough lighting gear to sufficiently control it. So I opted for a perfectly or at least satisfactory lit green screen so that I at least I wouldn't have to worry about separating myself from the background properly. So I'm going to shoot now all the things that are happening in this time tunnel thing and then hopefully we'll, we'll start doing the Minecraft bit. I started with shooting the biggest chunk first, which was the six scenes taking place inside the time tunnel. So everything is set up for, for, for the first shot. I even have here my trusty little flight app to see if there is anything that's disturbing my voice recording. And as we can see here, there is a plane inbound to Salzburg airport. So this means I got a couple of minutes to do the first scene, which will be this one here, the interdimensional space number one. It was pretty complicated because I didn't shoot them one after the other, but I shot uh, all the six scenes for one character, then changed costume and shot all the six scenes with that character. And because there was a lot of back and forth between the characters, I really had to keep all six scenes in my head as they would play out for each character. And it was almost too much, but it, it still worked. It still worked. Ah, maybe you just need something else. Next, I tackled the Minecraft scene, which was also complicated, but for a different reason. The reason was that it involved a lot of different uh, shots and scene changes 
And instead of moving the camera around in front of a green screen, I positioned myself and the lights differently for each shot. And this was another instance where the storyboards came in really helpful so that I just used them as a template where I looked at them and thought, okay, I'm standing in the right side of the image, looking to the left and the light is coming from the front. For example, let's take a closer look at future Phil pointing at the sunset where we cut from a front shot to a back shot of both fills. This is how it looked in the edit. The sun was my wife holding a light with an orange gel over it. Lastly, I recorded Future Phil pop up with a narrow framing to steal items from popular games. Oh my god, I'm exhausted. And that's a wrap on the green screen. And also a wrap for this video, because next time we'll be looking at the digital magic that happens. Yes, the visual effects and how I made them a reality. If you haven't, uh, please check out the previous videos in this series if you're interested in them. Uh, if you want to support me on Patreon, I'd be very happy to receive your support. And if not, you can shoot me a one-off donation by buying me a candy bar or some coffee over at pixelprophecy.com. So until next time, see you around and thank you for watching.